These machines are the strange workhorses of a Galway company that tests items of equipment, sometimes to the point of destruction, to help manufacturers to make products that will continue to function in varying conditions over time. The company also tests packaging to ensure that products can be transported safely to reach the consumer undamaged. This is a unique industrial service in Ireland and it's expanding. From the time we started up to about two years ago, we concentrated on the Irish market. So in the last couple of years, we have now gone outside of Ireland and we're getting business from Scandinavia, the UK, from France. And last week we were testing product from Turkey. The company emerged from the closure of the digital plant in Galway in 1993. It might never have existed if digital hadn't closed down. The company is the brainchild of two men, Frank Cashman and Lee Marr, who both worked as engineers in digital. When they lost their jobs, they joined forces to create their innovative test lab, which they called Enecto. I suppose there's strength in numbers and there's complementary skills. Certainly starting your own business or, or in business on your own can, can be a lonely place to be and, and it is helpful to have, um, to have others to work with. Frank uh, brought uh, probably uh, 20 odd years of ex exper ex experience, expertise in the manufacturing industry and he would have been very close to manufacturing, I would have been very close to on the engineering side of it. So uh, that uh, mixture or that synergy I think uh, worked very well. This company tests a fascinating array of products involving a wide range of industries including the computer, food, automobile, aerospace, pharmaceutical, electronic and medical device industries. Here a known volume of water is being released over a piece of machinery to simulate rain. If the, this motor is in an application where it's out in rain, that rain should not be able to get into the, the, the product. This goes on for uh, uh, 10 minutes and it's monitored uh, uh, by a stopwatch. You can see Mike has a stopwatch there and that's as per the standard. What the guys are doing there is simulating a product, a, a pallet, as it's moved along corridors, hitting walls, uh, uh, being dropped from forklift trucks, and the customer or client who we're doing the testing for would open the pallet and inspect the product. And first of all, see is there any visual damage to the product, uh, and, uh, and also have a look to see is there any functional problem to the product. Starting the test lab business was a slow affair with only three customers in the first year. However, the company had an ace up its sleeve, a cash cow in the form of a workshop that repairs power supply units for computers returned under warranty for big brand names like Dell. This workshop kept the company solvent while it built up clients and capacity for its test lab services. We have contracts with companies in Taiwan who are the main suppliers and responsible for the warranty repair of these units. Cost has always been a factor in, in, in this, um, this particular segment of the business. Because as I, I would say to people, our, our costs are dictated by Beijing, not by what's going on, on in the Irish market. This piece of equipment, a small test chamber, came from digital after the shutdown. It then played a vital role in the history of the test lab side of the business by attracting its first customer. We were in a position to bid for the business because we had this machine. The power supply which had to be tested would be placed in the, in the machine such as this. It would be cabled through this porthole to various um, loads and power sources and meters. We then closed the door of the chamber and this chamber can test from minus 40 degrees to plus 100 degrees C. And the engineer monitors the performance of voltages and currents and reports his findings to the design engineer. Anecto is proud of the range of industries that it now serves. It recently moved into the automotive industry. One of its contracts involves helping a Galway manufacturer of onboard cameras to test its products for a major maker of luxury cars. This test simulates the vibration of a car on the road over a period of time. Basically what we're doing with it is uh, finding out is there any mechanical defects in the actual product. 
And by doing that, we're sweeping the product uh, vibration-wise from a low frequency to a high frequency and back again. And if there's weaknesses uh, uh, across those frequencies, uh, they will manifest themselves in a product failure. Anecto is proud, too, of several landmark achievements in its 13-year history, including a recent audit by its peers in the industry. The scope of our audit covered 28 different processes, uh, which covers um, the automotive, testing for the automotive industry, aerospace industry, um, medical device industry. And in addition to that, we have added um, testing of dangerous goods to the UN specifications. We are the, the only test lab in Ireland offering that. And Nectar can now therefore test plastic barrels and other containers used to transport dangerous goods. Its tests of plastic barrels include chemical temperature and leak tests, and a test to see how they'd react to the weight of other barrels stacked on top of them in a warehouse. The, bar the barrel is placed under the under the this weight here and the equivalent weight of two barrels are placed on top of that to, and it is then placed in the chamber and left at 40 degrees C for 28 days. At the end of the test the barrel is inspected to ensure that it has not um, developed any flaws or any leaks and if so and if it successfully passes the other tests it will be awarded a UN certificate by the NSAI, which are the National Standards Authority of Ireland. Another source of pride is this piece of equipment for highly accelerated life testing. It's the most expensive item ever purchased by the company. It heats products, freezes them, and vibrates them to breaking point. But what we're doing here is recreating in the space of a few hours what a product will see in its lifetime. So we're compressing, accelerating the stresses involved. If you uh, take an example of a paper clip, that if you keep breaking it at its weak side, it will break after a period of time. What this is doing is doing it extremely fast. So the weakness in a product, this machine will uh, cause uh, the, 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 uh, the weakness to manifest itself in a very short period of time and allow the, our customer to go back into the design phase and fix that problem. What distinguishes the company, too, is its adaptability. At first, most of its lab testing business was geared towards the telecoms industry. But when that industry went through a downturn, the medical device industry began to grow in the Galway area, and the Necto adapted itself to cater for it. Philip Roxby here is testing the strength of seals on medical pouches. These will be opened by hand, and you don't want it to be too strong, so that in case a nurse can't open it, let's say. Um, or you don't want it to be too weak to allow infection in. Noel Gibbons is responsible for another type of test on medical packages. He tests the ability of packages to keep their contents sterile. For this, he must carefully monitor bubbles. A certain kind of bubbling means that a package is breathable, and that's good. Whereas another kind of bubbling means that a package is punctured, and that's bad. If it keeps bubbling, then we have a suspect area within the actual pouch itself where a microbe could actually enter the actual pouch and compromise the sterility of the actual product within. We've designed all of the equipment here and manufactured all the equipment that you've actually seen here behind you, uh, here ourselves, because there is nothing on the market that can actually do this. We mustn't forget that all this activity rose like the phoenix out of the ashes of digital. It creates employment today for younger staff who were still at school when digital closed its doors. But it also provides work for older staff like Stephen Moran, who could hardly have dreamt of careers here when they lost their jobs at digital. The last time I was on this telly was leaving digital. I was at 13, 14. I was lucky when I came back that Frank and Liam asked me to come on as a supervisor first for a month's contract. And I'm still here, and this is nine years later. Digital had uh, some very good people available, technical people, uh, and we were able to bring those. Uh, they, they saw what we were uh, what we were about, and they were willing to stay with us, and they're, st they're still with us. You 